Hello fellow 3D print designers, this is Jay Wall with Print That Thing, and this is an excerpt from my larger four-week workshop, uh, but I just wanted to share it with you guys and girls out there, so if anyone needs help, you can set up your blender for your 3D printer. And if you want to sign up for the full course, just go over to www.ptt.live, ptt.live, and then you can take the full course, uh, or the first week for free, and learn some stuff with Blender for 3D printing. That's me and my dog. In this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to set up Blender for your specific 3D printer. Um, so this is kind of an optional lesson. If you um, if it confuses you, you know, feel free to just move on to the next lesson. Um, but what we're going to do is change Blender to read in millimeters because that is kind of the most common unit of measure for 3D print design or 3D printing. Um, and we're also going to create a kind of like a studio so that anytime you open Blender, it's going to be ready with your 3D print uh, build volume. You could have multiple 3D printers, uh, but let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you uh, kind of what I'm talking about. So when you first open up Blender, it's going to look like this, just the generic cube. And if I click on the cube and hit in for information, notice that we are in, uh, this cube is measured at two meters. So it's a pretty big cube. Uh, but what we want to do is change Blender to where this says millimeters. Um, again, I want to stress you don't have to do this. If you want to just uh, leave it as is, uh, Blender will still work properly. But if you want to set up Blender exactly for your 3D printer and you want to type in exact measurements like in millimeters, then yeah, you this is how you do it. So first thing you want to do is go over to the properties tabs and click on the one, two, three, four, fifth one down. It's a little cone with some spheres. And right there you should see units with a little twiddle down. So go ahead and twiddle it on down. And right off the bat you're going to see unit system metric, uh, unit scale one. So that's going to be in meters. But what we want to do is switch it to millimeters. So just type in 0 .001. So just make sure it's 0 .001. It's going to automatically add that front zero. That's totally fine. And then for length, instead of meters, we want to do millimeters. And that may seem like that's all you have to do, but there is more. It is not that simple. Notice that our grid has kind of disappeared, uh, our, our smaller grid. We still have these big lines going through here, but we're l we've lost our, our grid. So to get our grid back, we want to go to the overlays here. It looks like two spheres or two circles kind of overlapping and then there's a drop down right beside that. So click on that and on scale we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do point zero zero one, and then looky there we've got our grid back. So now go ahead and click on your cube uh, here in the center and notice now the cube is measured at two millimeters. So that's really 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 tiny. I mean, it's actually itty bitty. Um, and another thing you can do is go to view, this little view tab right here, and change your clip start from uh, 0.1, just change that to just a 1, so maybe just 1 millimeter. And then for the end, you can do it like 2,000 or 3,000, whichever you prefer. And that's just uh, so when you zoom in really closely, uh, Blender doesn't start like making your... Uh, your items disappear you know so if you are seeing your items disappear like when you zoom in or zoom out you need to change your clip start and your your end so that's one step so good job if you've gotten that far now we are officially in millimeters um, but what we want to do is maybe just scale this up so let's scale this um, cube up to maybe let's do 50 so just type in you know you can click on the X and Y and drag down and then just type 50 and then there you go hit period on the numpad and that's gonna zoom it out so now we've got a 50 millimeter cube right there um, for your 3d printer but uh, one thing that really helps me is if I have kind of like a bounding box of what my actual 3d printer dimensions are so for example I use a CR 10 which is a pretty big printer, um, so its build volume is 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters tall, so uh, about a foot um, in each direction. Um, so what we're going to do is kind of represent that inside of Blender. So to do that, um, we're going to create 
a new cube, so just do um, Shift A, or you can go to Add Mesh Cube. And now we've got a new cube, and just call that whatever your printer is. So mine is a CR10, so you can just do CR10 uh, Volume, maybe type Volume after it. And then uh, what we want to do is scale that up. So make sure you have your printer volume selected and then just type in the dimensions. So mine is 300 millimeters wide by 300 millimeters deep by 400 millimeters tall. Oh, not 4,000, <laughs> 400 millimeters tall. So now we've got a kind of like a representation of our, our 3D printer build volume. That way when we're designing things, we're not gonna, we kind of have an idea of how big or how small the, um, the object is in, in reality. You know, so uh, let's go ahead and bring that up. So just hit G and Z, and that will lock this to the Z axis. And you just want to bring it up to the uh, the side here. I'm going to go to my side view right there, and then hit G and Z, and just put it right there on top of the uh, the X axis or the Y axis right there. And we can do the same thing for the cube. Just go ahead and hit G and Z and bring that up, and just kind of place it there. It doesn't have to be perfect but just kind of on the uh, the print bed there. And what you'll notice now is that we can't see inside of it. So to fix that, we're going to click on the box. So make sure you have the box, the, uh, the printer volume selected. And we're going to go to the properties tabs over here. And it's one right kind of in the middle. It looks like a square with some square brackets. And that is your object properties. And if you scroll down to the bottom there, there is viewport display. So go ahead and twiddle that down. And near the bottom of that tab, or that uh, twiddle down, is a display as. And it's going to be set to textured just default, but we want it to be bounds. So there you go. Now, this is a 50 millimeter cube inside of my 3D print bed. So now I can just easily, at a glance, tell, okay, yeah, I can, I can tell how big that cube is going to be when I 3D print it. Another tip, uh, so you don't accidentally just keep selecting the box all the time or the uh, the 3D printer volume, uh, you can go to your layers panel up here in the top right and there's this little kind of like filter uh, drop down and you can toggle on this selection and maybe even the disable on viewports, you know, any of those that you want. Uh, but really you want this one, this little arrow and what that will do is, uh, if you select your CR10 volume, you can unselect it. So now you can't accidentally select it. Um, and that way it can get annoying sometimes if it's kind of in the way. But if you uncheck that, um, you know, you won't accidentally select it or you won't accidentally move it. Uh, it'll just stay kind of locked in place there. And you can also turn off the uh, little camera icon here. And that will make it so when you, if you go to render, uh, you're not going to see that uh, pop up in your, your renders. And again, if this is uh, confusing for any beginners, uh, you can completely disregard this uh, lesson and then just come back to it later, maybe after you've finished the course or you feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but um, this is just a very helpful tip that I wanted to share with you all because I, I, I think it's really cool. So now we've got that set up. Um, let's go ahead and re name the collection let's call it so just double click on that and just call it like studio studio yeah and then we're going to create a new um, collection right here and sometimes you can't see the collection right there so you can scroll over here and notice how it's kind of sliding or you can grab this little edge here and bring it over but there's a little uh, collection icon with a plus and we want to just hit that and it actually put it inside of our studio because I had selected, but that's okay. Just click and drag it out. And now we've got our separate little collection and just rename that flexible design because that's where we're going to do most of our design work. And we can even take our little, you know, generic cube and drag that in there. And one thing I did notice um, looking at it now is that I've, I've kind of messed up the scale when I increased it to 50. So in Blender, you really want your scale to stay at a ratio of 1. And right now we have it at 25. So that could be give us some issues later down the road when we're adding effects or modifiers. 
So to fix that, you just want to go to Object and then go to Apply, Scale. Another way you could do that is just click on the cube, hit Control A, and then do Scale or Rotation Scale. Either one is fine. So now look, we've got a 50 millimeter cube at one scale, and that's great. That's what we want. But we're not done yet. There's still more. I know. Th I mean, you could go from here, but uh, you know, why not? Let's just keep. Let's just keep going. So one thing we have is our camera, which is itty bitty bitty bitty. If you hit, uh, you know, if you select your camera there, and then hit period on your numpad, you can see our camera's itty bitty bitty. And we we may use that from time to time. Once you're in your more advanced lessons in week four, um, you'll be able to understand, you know, how we can use this camera with our 3D print designs. But for now. Let's just scale it up. So make sure you have your camera selected and then just hit S and then just scale that bad boy up. Pretty pretty large, maybe until it's a little bit bigger than this cube or about the same size. And that looks pretty good. And then now we can hit G and Y and just drag it on back and maybe hit R to rotate. And then while you still have it, um, you know, once you hit R, then the next button you wanna hit is Z and that's gonna lock it on the Z axis. And then we can just point it kind of at the cube. Um, it's kind of looking down. You can tell it's not looking at the cube. So to fix that, make sure you still have your camera. And then just hit G and then Z. And we're going to just slide it on up. And there we go. So now if you hit uh, zero on your numpad, you will actually go into the camera view. But we can't see it. Um, and that is because of our clipping. So let's go ahead and hit maybe just one. Or just kind of, you know, move your mouse around and kind of get out of there. Or you can use this little widget to kind of get out of that camera mode. Um, and then we want to go to the camera icon down here. And the same thing for here. We have clip start, clip end. Just make that maybe like one millimeter. And then for your end, you could do maybe like 2,000. So now if we hit zero on the numpad. And now we can see the actual cube if we... Uh, you know, wanted to take a picture of it. Um, and another thing we can do is take our light and kind of move it around. So I have my light selected and go ahead and hit period on your numpad. And that's going to zoom in and see this little circle thing. That is your light. And it's itty bitty bitty and it's super tiny, just kind of in the middle of our cube here. So what we want to do is uh, just bring that up. So hit, make sure you still have your light selected. And then while you're over your 3D viewport, just hit G and Z, and you'll bring that light on up. So you can go you know, all the way to the top of your uh, 3D print volume. So again, just make sure you have your light selected. Hit G and Z, and then just go all the way up to the top. And the next thing we want to do is change this light, because right now it is um, a point light. So to switch it, make sure you have your light selected. And then on the Properties panel, click on this little light bulb and we're going to change it from a point light to the sun da -da -dum -dum. and um, to be able to see what the light is doing you need to switch over to uh, the EV live render viewing so to do that in the top right corner you're going to hit that last sphere the fourth one and just click on that and notice we have uh, the sun uh, you can kind of see the light and there should be a kind of little dot that's coming off of your light and that is the direction of the sun so notice as I just move this around all willy-nilly the light on the cube is changing and it's a little bright and extreme so let's just take the strength over here and just take it down to maybe like 10 that's that's plenty and you can change this at any time depending on what you're modeling you know just give your 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 design some light so there's still one final step and please do not forget to do this this is uh you know just so you never have to do this again um, you can kind of set this as your default so to do that go to file go to defaults and then save startup file and it's kind of tricky here you want to click it once and then you have to click it again so make sure you hit it twice save startup file boom and there you go so now, every time you open up Blender, you're going to have your 3D printer looking at you with a cube to kind of give you a sense of scale. Uh, you're going to have your light ready to go and your camera ready to go all from the get-go. Um, so that's just a cool tip that I learned 
that uh, you know I thought was really cool. And a way that you can test this to make sure your scale is correct, we can just click on the cube, go to our 3D print toolbox, and then on export, you know, maybe we just go to the desktop, and we're going to export an STL, hit export, and then we'll open up our slicing software. And I'm using Simplify 3D here, but you can use any slicing software you want. You've got Slicer from Prusa, um, you've got Cura, there's a bunch of other ones out there too, but uh, those are some free ones. Simplify is more of like a professional 3D print slicer, um, but we're just going to import that cube. It's on the desktop. Hit open and just double click on it and there we go we've got 50 millimeters right there and that is exactly what we want so go ahead and test that on your slicer make sure your your um, dimensions and your lengths are all correct and that you are using millimeters and you can use the same setup uh, for the rest of the course lessons for week one two three and four when I recorded the originals I just did it in meters but it still will export it out um, in the correct scale but this is just kind of a little bit more advanced lesson if you want to really fine tune Blender so it fits uh, for your 3D printer and that you're typing in actual uh, millimeter measurements. So hopefully that helped and didn't confuse anyone. If uh, you are confused or if, this, uh, if there's anything that I can make more clear, please leave a uh, comment or discussion in the top right of this video and I will respond to you ASAP. All right, thanks everybody. And let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson. This online class teaches you the Blender basics while you create a simple door wedge, 3D printable photos, a wearable ring with text, a box animal, a toy car, 3D printed pottery, a sculpted snowman, and you'll even make a cell phone amplifier that fits your phone. I created this course for someone who's ready to finally learn how to design but has little to no experience. Sign up today to learn your new superpower of 3D design for 3D printing. I can't wait to meet you and see what you create.